The NFL Draft is done and over, and I am going to be breaking down each and every team and grading out their draft. So check back every day because one team I will do every single day, and I'll have it up here on YouTube for you to watch. We'll go over every prospect that they drafted as well as some key undrafted free agents that they may bring in. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to address them for you. Also, just be aware of my draft grades. No one fails the draft, especially right after it. Even no one in this draft is going to get a D or an F from me because they, everyone had a talent. Everyone did something. So if you think the grades are a little bit high, that's just me not going to too much extremes. And maybe in three or four years, when we look back on this draft, then we can see who really succeeded and who really failed. So sit back, relax, enjoy me as I break down every single team this year. Draft expert Shane Hallam shows off his knowledge. Writing mock drafts, prospects from the best college. Breaking down tape, he might develop a man crush. Tearing up guys, taking questions in a rush. Comparisons, learning lessons. Shane saves the day, oy vey. Hulk or banner, doesn't matter. Listen, cause here's who can play. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Indianapolis Colts. And the Indianapolis Colts, I thought, had a good draft. They reached on a couple players, though. So, let's talk about them. Their first pick was Jerry Hughes, defensive end out of TCU. And Jerry Hughes is someone that I'm a big fan of. He's very productive at TCU the last two seasons. Got in the backfield, very good pass rusher. Not great in space, not a great cover guy. So there's some questions about his fit in certain defenses. The Indianapolis Colts are a perfect defense for him. He's undersized, but that's what they like there. They got Dwight Freeney, got Robert Mathis. He's very similar to those two prospects. He's someone that can come in, learn from them for a year, and after this year, one of those two are going to be out of town. And we saw what happened with the Colts when Dwight Freeney got hurt for the Super Bowl. They were missing him. They lost their whole pass rush. Jerry Hughes will make sure that does not happen again. Uh, the rumor was the New Orleans Saints were going to take him if he fell to 32. I didn't really like that fit for him, but I do like the Colts fit. So I think Jerry Hughes, great pick, a 31 for the Colts. Now in the second round, they took Pat Anger, linebacker out of Iowa. Pat Anger is someone that's going to be pretty intriguing. He's, he's a tackle machine. He's someone that's probably going to start for them, get 100, 110, 120 tackles a year, which will look great on the stat sheet, but he doesn't give you much in coverage, doesn't give you much sideline to sideline, more of a thumper inside. So I think he will help the run defense that Indianapolis Colts have never quite had an elite run defense for uh, as far as I can remember. In the third round, they took Kevin Thomas, cornerback at USC. Now, Kevin Thomas is someone that was on scouts' radars, maybe not on the common person's radar watching the draft, but he's someone that was raising up boards slowly but surely at USC. Fits that system, Nindy, perfectly. They have Gerard Powers that came in last year, played extremely well. They have uh, Lacey, who they brought in as an undrafted free agent, also played well. Thomas can come in, maybe play the nickel, maybe get that number two spot down. He's very good at reading and reacting, and that's what you need in the Colts' cover two-esque system. So I like Kevin Thomas's fit. I thought it was a solid pick, maybe about a round too early. Um, and Pat Anger maybe was a round or two early as well. So slight reaches on these guys, but they should turn into something. The fourth, they took Jacques McClendon, offensive lineman out of Tennessee. Now, Jacques McClendon is someone that I thought should get drafted, maybe in the seventh round. Took him in the fourth. Doesn't have very much strength. He doesn't give you anything in the run game. I don't think he can be a starter in the NFL. And the Colts need offensive line help. They need a new left tackle. Tony Hugo, it's not working out. Uh, and Bill Pullen knows that they need offensive line. I don't think Jacques McClendon is the solution. I really don't think he is. So, uh, that was something that I just thought was a reach at the time. I, I couldn't believe he went this early, even before teammate Chris Scott. He does fit the Colts system. I just don't really love taking him in the fourth round. In the fifth, they took Brody Eldridge, tight end out of Oklahoma. This guy's more of a blocking, pure tight end. He's someone that, that probably will come in, and I just really don't know where he's going to fit because Dallas Clark, obviously he's using many versatile ways, put him in the slot, line him up on the line, mismatch. Are they really uh, going to use tight, two tight end sets with Brody Eldridge to block much? I don't think so. Maybe around the goal line he can use on the block. I know they need a little bit better run blocking there, and he can help that. I just don't know how he's going to be used. So I want to see that first. I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach with this pick. 
In the seventh, they took Ricardo Matthews, defensive tackle out of Cincinnati. I'm not a big Ricardo Matthews fan. He's undersized. He's not very athletic. I know they need defensive tackle depth and probably starters too in Indianapolis, but Ricardo Matthews is the answer. I'd be very surprised if he makes the team. He didn't get many sacks at Cincinnati. He got in the backfield sometimes against the run. He's okay. But in the NFL, I don't think he's going to hold up. Seventh, they also took Cavell Connor, outside linebacker out of Clemson. Now, Cavell Connor, someone's very strong. He's, he played almost every game that he was there for at Clemson. He didn't get hurt ever. He, I like him. I just think he's more of a special teamer in the NFL. I don't think he has the athleticism to start at linebacker. He might give you a depth for a down or two he can come in, but I think he's more of a special teamer. We'll see if he makes the team. And then finally in the seventh, they also took Ray Fisher, cornerback out of Indiana, a guy that played wide receiver up until this past season, switched over to corner. So he's very raw, very developmental, but he has the athletic skills. He has the ball skills. So probably a practice squad guy that the Colts want to bring along and see if they can develop him into a starter, kind of a long shot type of player. So as a whole, I'm going to give the Colts a B-. minus. I thought the early picks were good. I like the Jerry Hughes pick, but past that, nothing feels dynamic to me. I don't think Pat Anger is a dynamic pick. I, I don't like the seventh round picks, any of them really, as people that are going to come in and start at any, at any point down the line uh, or even make the team. I don't know Kevin Johnson. I don't know if he's going to be a starter in the NFL. I like his fit. I like his upside. Thought it was a little early. Thought it was early for anger. Thought Jock McClendon was a huge reach. So first round pick, great. But past that, I don't know how much the Colts help themselves. Their offensive line is still going to be a mess. They still don't have a defensive tackle to stop the run. Uh, you know, they have maybe added some cornerback depth and they got a pass rusher. Great. I'm just not sure how much better they're going to be. I don't think this puts them over the top in terms of winning a Super Bowl. So there you go. B- minus for the Colts. Same grade as the Texans yesterday. Uh, in terms of undrafted free agents, one guy caught my eye, and that was Brandon James, who's a return specialist out of Florida, undersized running back. I wonder if he could make this team because I think they could use an upgrade at return for the Colts and Brandon James is someone that can do that. So I'm very interested to see if he might be someone undrafted that makes it as a return specialist because those guys are, you can get paid. If you can return kicks, you can get paid. And I think Brandon James is a guy that can do that for them. So there you go. Indianapolis Colts next week, we're going to be, or tomorrow, we're going to be doing Jacksonville Jaguars. So that was a very controversial draft, and if you're watching my Ustream, you know why. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about the Indianapolis Colts draft? Thanks, guys. See you soon.